What is up, Fight fans? Welcome to another episode of FFS for Fight Sakes. Today, we've got an episode that we're going to dedicate to our South African UFC fighter. And, you know, it's, it's long overdue, man. We haven't gone in depth and actually discussed our boy Drickers Duplessis. But today, uh, to help me out with that, as usual, we've got Taban and Ryan. What up, fellas? Hey, what's up, guys? Sad name, people. Sad name. Gentlemen, we've got a potential champ on our hands. We might possibly have a South African champ suit. Uh, uh-huh. It's still a long way to go. It's still a tall uh, <laughs> order, but it is possible. Um, I don't know if I'm <clears throat> speaking for you guys when I say that I personally don't care about the whole fight between the African champs or whatever. As far as I see it, we're just adding one more African champ to the list, right? Yeah, 100%. Uh, and and that's all that matters, man. We're bringing more, more gold back. Yeah, uh, and I, I, I just want good fights. That's okay. all we want, man. I don't care. I don't care want. about the politics outside the ring and, and shit. Um, just get good fighters in the ring and let's see good fights. That's it. Yeah, no, 100%, man. Mm. And, and and with this one, our boy Drake is fighting uh, Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whitaker. That's uh, that's 100% going to be a good fight. I, mm. can't, uh, I, I can't see this being a boring fight. Neither one of them have a style for a boring fight. So I think that, uh, this is going to be really good. Uh, and it's definitely Drickus' toughest fight to date. Uh, and I would go so far as to say it would probably be Drickus' toughest fight in the division. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they're, so, they're so closely matched, eh? Hey? Yeah. Him and, him and uh, Bobby Knuckles, uh, Robert Whitaker. Just, yeah. uh, I've always been calling him Bobby Knuckles. Sometimes I forget his real name, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it's going to be a jam-packed fight. We know that Bobby Knuckles is going to bring it. But what's interesting, gents, is, is, is the surgery that everyone's talking about, right? Because as far as we know, everyone's been complaining about the cardio. And we can see it. We've seen it. It's not that it's, it's, it's like something that's like hidden. We all know about it. But... Because of his cardio, he had to go in for surgery and actually fix his nose. And from what I've heard, they used to say something like he was running at like 4%. He's breathing at like 4% of what he's capable of. Or what was it? Yeah, his nose was only responsible for like 8% of his oxygen intake. I don't know. Ryan, um, I know that you train somewhere near where he used to train or where he trains. Um, have you perhaps been able to see a better incline in the cardio or maybe heard something? Yeah, uh, look, I'm proud to say that we share the same jiu-jitsu coach. And from what I've heard, just uh, being around some of the guys, Rickus's cardio is just through the roof. His VO2 max has doubled. He, uh, he was hitting extreme pro athlete levels of fitness two weeks out before his peak so uh i mean cardio wise this is going to be a different fighter than what everyone else has seen so far what's a what's a vo2 level bro sorry to sorry to um, what is it yeah so uh look in, in basic terms it's uh it's essentially uh how effectively you're using the oxygen intake uh that you're getting that's mm-hmm. why, like, you uh, you know, you get these extreme athletes uh, where, like, their resting heart rate is sitting so much lower than that of normal people. It's because their body is using the oxygen more effectively. It's being, uh, it's being pumped through their system more efficiently. So, I mean, like, your, your average person, their heart rate sits, uh, resting heart rate, that is, sit, uh, sits somewhere between... Uh, mid 60s to high 70s even into the 80s and that sort of thing particularly with your average sedentary person probably higher but then you get your elite athletes and um, I'm not 100% sure on what the actual number is but from what I hear uh, Drickus's heart rate is very low 40s possibly even high 30s uh, and I mean that's beats per minute 
So, so, so yeah. Hold on. So, so for for maybe for people who don't know what happened to his nose, what why did he need surgery, and was his performance always like the way we saw him with Darren Till, or was that at that eight percent situation? Uh, so if I remember correctly, I think he's been battling with this since before he got to the UFC, but then the UFC called and it's like, well, you don't fucking say no. Uh, and I believe it's just the buildup of cartilage from the nose possibly being broken before and getting banged up in sparring and fights before that. Uh, so it just builds up inside. So your ability to breathe through there, like it's not a clear... Uh, a clear channel for the air to travel through. But they've cleaned that all up now. From what I hear, his his recovery was, uh, it went very well. The surgery was a great success. And from what I hear, how he was doing in camp, it's the difference is really showing. Uh, obviously, with most people fight uh, Bobby Knuckles, they bring in some karate stylists uh, to try and work uh, to, to gauge his footwork and the way that he darts in at times. And what I've heard through the grapevine is that he's been uh, not using his power, but using his timing uh, and accuracy to actually drop some of the top karate guys we have in the country. Uh, and, yeah, and, and he's, do, uh, we, do we have a lot of those, though? Um, uh, well, a lot more than what you a lot more like than you'd think. who can emulate yeah. Bobby Knuckles' style. Uh, his style, 100%, no, because obviously it's been adapted for MMA. But the general footwork timing of how he bounces and then uh, blitzes in and then out and, uh, and that sort of thing. Perhaps the choice of weapon that he attacks with is different, mm -hmm. but the, the entry is still the same. So they've been working, yeah. So they've been working hard on developing the right sort of timing to counteract that. I know that they've been uh, coming up with plans to deal with Bobby Knuckles' biggest weapons, uh, namely being the uh, the looping uh, looping jab uh, slash hook mm. that he throws from the lead side, uh, mm. the that knee stomp he uses with the lead leg, uh, the right high kick. The looping right hand. Uh, so they've been working on that uh, for sure. They've been uh, uh, and they've been been working on fighting him wherever this goes. As we know, Ro uh, Robert Whitaker has some good wrestling himself, uh, and we've seen him take down some some prominent guys in the past. I mean, shit, the guy went ten rounds with Yoel Romero, and Romero mm. couldn't really get him down. Mm. You know, mm. so. Obviously, uh, the guy is well versed in his wrestling, uh, and from what I hear, they're going to be prepared in all aspects. Um, Who do you think is the aggressor in that fight? Uh, I'd have to say Drickus. Uh, Bobby Knuckles is always more of a uh, of an in and out kind of striker. Uh, he likes to uh, get in, hit you, get out, and then re-enter uh, on his own time. You know, it's not it's not often that we see him kind of getting into a brawl and just standing in the middle and swinging with guys. I think one of the uh, the few times we've seen him do that was the, the the first Israel fight, and we saw how that worked out for him. Uh, so I doubt we'll see him at, at least attempting that sort of thing. Uh, and Drickus is just an aggressive fighter in general. You know, he's not the type to sit and let uh, and and hang back and try and counter you coming in. He's going to come for your head. We don't know that we're... He, he's getting to these guys where um, the striking threat starts to increase, so maybe he'll start going to the ground more and working with guys there. We've already seen Israel Adesanya openly admit that in previous sparring sessions that they've had together, Drickus has manhandled him in the wrestling and grappling department. And that, uh, and from what I understand, these sparring sessions happened years ago. So Wait. we know, we know for a fact that Drickus is much better now. Israel and 
Drickers have spied before. Um, so, yeah. from what I understand, they their times at Tiger Muay Thai, there was some overlap there. Uh, Israel insists that they had uh, stand-up rounds together and grappling rounds together. Uh, Dricker says it was only grappling rounds and says that, they, that they've never done any stand-up uh, sparring. Uh, obviously, I wasn't there, so I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm not sure about that. Obviously, I'd uh, I'd like to give the benefit of the doubt to uh, to the homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Why? But uh, look, guys, does it really matter though? Uh, you know? No, it doesn't it's really not. matter. Oh, no, oh, no, man, oh, we're about oh, to oh, see no, because why? because we don't know if his nose was working or not when he was tra- when he was. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's so many determining factors. So like it's. And and either way, bro. Even if we look at it any other way and say that that was back then, we we can't put past the fact that Izzy has also grown his wrestling and his jujitsu since then. That's true. And Rickus has grown his striking since then as well. Definitely. As well. No, a hundred percent. And I mean, uh, look, maybe that's not saying much about our local scene. Uh, but when Drickus rolls into some of these black belt tournaments around the country, he manhandles guys at their own game. Uh, and look, part of that may be that he he is a pro athlete, and his level of strength. You know, he's got the uh, he's got that uh, that Afrikaner strength. You know, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> When that guy squeezes you, mm-hmm. fuck, bro, you, t- you don't want anything to do with that situation. Yeah. <laughs> and for those who don't know, um, Drickus is actually our Extreme Fighting Championship EFC uh, middleweight and welterweight champ. Former. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, Back man. in the days, back in the days. I think a lot of people don't understand that this man has quite a bit of experience behind his belt. Yes, he's 5-0 and in the UFC. But that's just the UFC, right? Yeah. At uh, some point. I think he's also fought uh, possibly in Russia. I can't remember. but he, Because he had uh, multiple fights at uh, KSW that's out that yeah. side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he won the, uh, uh, either the welterweight or middleweight championship there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that was possibly around the same time that he took both belts at EFC as well. So that's also uh, the, the, that's quite the achievement, particularly for for one of our guys. I mean, I think Drickus is only what one two. He's only our fifth South African to make it to the UFC. Now that now that I have you on on business there, thinking Drickus, who do you think is taking it between Bobby Knuckles and and no bias? between Robert Whitaker and Drickus Duplessis Jens. Let's look at the facts. Okay, so if if Whitaker picks his shots, right? He does the in and out. He might win. Right? But if he crumbles to Drickus's pressure, then he's going to lose cuz he doesn't fight very well moving backwards. Right? So if Rikas keeps moving forward, then I'm worried for him. Do you right. see it going the full bout? Do you see it going all? No, no, two two rounds. You're right. Two rounds. Um, either submission by Whitaker. Okay. Or knockout by Rikas. But it's happening in the second round. Sure. Do you know this guy, you know the problem with this guy is that he makes these bold statements that sound ridiculous and then it happens and then... (laughs) (laughs) Gonna happen, Like, every time I bet, I ask Ryan and then I ask Tabang and Tabang has a more successful raid right now. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Oh, yeah. What, what, what can yeah, I tell you? Man? But uh, but I don't know about the second round thing, Tawang, bro. I don't know, man. What Because <laughs> we've got two guys that are very high paced. They've got the cardio to, to pull it forth. I don't see them um, going at it hard in the first round. They're probably going to want to feel them, so each other out, right? And, and, and see what's up. Um, that's when we'll also get to see 
uh, Drickus is breathing and see what he's what he's been working on, right? And sure. so, uh, then possibly then possibly in the second round we'll start seeing some action and yeah. some forward. But Ryan, who do you think is taking it? Yeah. Uh, look. Uh, uh, I wonder. Uh, I, 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 I wonder. Look, <laughs> look, look, we, uh, we know I'm favoring Drickers, uh, but I, if I I'm think, being I honest, think I, heard, I think I heard no bias. <laughs> okay, let me uh, let me give you the non-biased. Uh, I 100% believe if this is a pretty fight where everything is smooth and slick, Whitaker will take it. But if this turns into a dog fight or mm. or, or a hard-fought battle. Drickus is going to take it. Uh, 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 yeah, I believe that 100%. No, definitely. Uh, and, and I do agree with you. I think the first round, they're going to feel each other out a lot. I think, uh, and even Whittaker ha- uh, has openly said this, he believes Drickus has gotten to this point because everyone else he's fought has kind of overlooked him uh, uh, and not taken him as seriously as they obviously should have. And if you kind of look at how the previous guys that Drickus has fought going into it, that's sort of the sense that you get. Obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty, but you look back at it now and it's just like, oh, yeah, they maybe weren't taking him as seriously as possible. But Robert Whitaker is not going to make that mistake. He is going to take the time to feel him out in the first round. And then I think the second round, I'm uh, telling you about the second round, man. Yeah, no, just <laughs> let me finish it. The second round <laughs> is where the action is really going to pick up. And that's when it's going to become a fight. 100%. Yeah. yeah. When, when you say the action is going to pick up, you're trying to say it's going to become a brawl and Drickus might possibly. Well, look, um, either Drickus is going to get in his face and make, uh, make this a, a dirty fight. Or Whitaker is going to start getting to work and be slick. Um, but with Drickus's newfound cardio, let's say, uh, and, and just the way he is when he gets in the pocket. We've seen the past three fights. When he gets in that pocket and it's tight and we're not going uh, and they're not moving out to distance, he gets the better of these positions. We saw that uh, with Derek Brunson recently. We saw that with Brad Tavares. Uh, two fights before that. Like, the, uh, this is what happens when he gets into that range and he starts working, guys. Look, and, with, mm-hmm. and, with, and with his uh, his type of power, he really only needs to hit you like that a few times before, uh, you know, uh, before before your energy bar starts dropping. Uh, and like you said, Whitaker isn't exactly the best guy fighting backwards. Uh, we we have seen him fight guys where he's managed to make that look better. Uh, for example, the Jared Cannonier fight, uh, the Calvin Gastelum fight. Uh, we saw him kind of get the better of those guys moving backwards as well. But neither of those guys is Drickers. Mm. Yeah. Look, my thing my, my thing is that I'm I'm pretty concerned, right? Um, only because Whitaker has only one person to look forward to, right? Which is Israel. So when these guys come through, he just has a Drickers to look at right now. And we know that Robert Whitaker, he, he says this about every person he fights. I, I really believe he really takes every fight very seriously, right? Yeah. And my concern comes with Drickers looking forward to Izzy so much. Um. I think it is uh, a bit of a concern because you've you've constantly got Israel in the background saying, "Yeah, mm. I'm hoping you do win so I can kick your ass next," yeah. and saying yeah. uh, the shit about the sparring and, and stuff and, like and that. And most of the social media stuff, sorry to cut you, most of the social yeah. media stuff is not even driven to him and um, Wurtzka. It's actually him and Adesanya, bro. That's true, and uh, and I think that can be a problem. Uh, but I do know that Rickus is one of those guys. He leaves no stone unturned. Every time, like I know, every time when he goes, uh, when he's in Vegas, he goes to the PI. He sees every single one of the guys in there. He takes what they have to offer to make him better. Uh, And one of those things has definitely been the mental coaching. 
and he's mm. uh, uh, and I hear he's been making some great strides in that area as well. You know, which is which is something. But on the mental side, unlike a lot uh, a lot of these other guys, Drikus love genuinely loves to fight like all the time. Like he uh, he is one of those guys. If sanctioned fighting wasn't a thing, we'd be finding that guy uh, in some dude's backyard brawling like the uh, like the old Kimbo Slice days. <laughs> he, like that that's the type of guy he is. Like when you see pro footballers in the street and some kid passes them the ball and they just can't help but, uh, but go and play and do something. Drikus is like that with fighting. Mm. Mm, yeah. Mm. So and, uh, and, and and with that said, Jens, I genuinely think he's gonna win it. Mm. Um, I think Robert Whitaker is a great fighter. I've always said this. I think every time we have these chats, I just can't help but go on about how how much I think he's just the second, the best second best we've had. Right? Yeah. And and it Hall of Fame type status man. Like the only person that's really given him a problem so far has been Izzy. Um, evidently, and uh, I'm a fan. But yeah. if Drickus has not let the easy thing actually interfere with his training and all of that stuff, um, I know how much he wants this. I know how hungry he is to actually go at it. So I, I, I don't think he would take this lightly because it's a big opportunity. And we don't know how serious the UFC will take him should he lose this fight, right? Because he is number five right now in the UFC, right? Uh, I think if so. If I'm not mistaken, he's number five right now. And the buzz around him is very big considering what he's been doing and all of that. But we know Dana White to kind of put you in the background should uh, things not go your way. So we do hope that things do go his way and yeah. that he can prove himself. Um, because um, we've spoken about this before, fellas. And as much as it's the fight business, promotion plays a big game. There's only so much longer this african thing can ride as well you know what i mean so yeah. we need to he needs to utilize this opportunity and make the most of it um but that's not to take away anything from him i think we've still got a new drinkers to look forward to because of the nose surgery so i don't take that in that away from him and i think um should he not not get the win because of his cardio and all of that and us seeing a new Drickers, we will be looking forward to either way seeing him fight other guys with his newfound cardio, right? And yeah. for him to actually showcase what we've all been saying, that he's a good fighter and that his cardio is just all that's keeping him back. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree. And you know what? Uh, it's something about the way that the, uh, that, that guy can just be. And I mean, he is very well aware that Robert would uh, like if we're being honest Robert Whitaker is the worst matchup for m most of the division I mean some other guys will be more susceptible uh to Israel or some of the other guys uh but this is definitely one of the uh, uh if not the most one of the most uh challenging matchups stylistically for Drickus but that being said to beat Robert Whitaker is really saying something because other than Pereira, we haven't had anyone challenge for that title that's actually been uh, able to beat him. Mm. I mean, per Pereira got a pass and just skipped right over him. But, I mean, everyone else that had to fight him at some point, they all lost. Marvin Vittori, um, Jared Cannonier. Uh, I mean, geez, the uh, the list goes on. The guy just mm. yeah. he, he just but beats then, up everyone. Darren Till, uh, Derek Brunson, I mean, mm. Calvin Gastelum. He just mows everyone down. Israel is the only guy at middleweight to ever get the better of him. Yeah, and and there's my worry about Whitaker though. Wouldn't this be basically his last run at the title? I don't think so. He's Not still, necessarily. I no, don't I don't so. think so. Like, well, what I do you mean, think happens after the loss well, to Drikas? Well, yeah, well, look, you know what the thing is? At the end of the day, he's still that top... Uh, uh, like, regardless of what happens with um, 
with Drikas if if he had to win and then go fight Israel. At the end of the day, if you want to get to the title and have a serious shot, you have to beat uh, Robert Whitaker. Because mm. we've seen. Because we know Pereira got ahead because of his history with Izzy. Mm. But everyone else, they've tried and all failed. And even the guys that did fight him and then lose and, uh, and then go f- uh, fight for the title... They weren't competitive at all, mm. not even slightly. Yeah, no. Yo, man, you know, you know. Also, another thing, Ryan, we need to shout out to Neil, man. Yeah. Damn, man. Like, uh, man, Neil is such like, like you know what? Apart from him being a badass at jujitsu, he's such a nice guy, man. Like, uh, um, I actually did a podcast with him a while back, a couple of years ago. I'll probably drop a link down there, but. He's such a nice guy, man. And he's got all these great fighters coming out of here prepared for the UFC. Like, they get yeah. there and, and they're more than ready, man. And Yeah, big, and he's been involved, to. man. He, uh, he was part of um, Gareth McClellan's team when he was in the UFC and before that. Obviously, we know he's part of Drickus's team now as well as Cameron's. Uh, and he uh, he's doing uh, some great work out of South Africa, you know. I mean... He's not part of one of these mega gyms like you hear about some of the other guys in other countries, but he he's clearly producing guys that can do the uh, uh, do the work. Mm. We, need, yeah. we need more of those guys, huh? Right. Yeah, those are guys. guys yo, yo. Like in every fucking province, actually. Yeah. Hundred percent. But you know they're actually there, bro. There's there's a guy out of Rustenburg who teaches Morganti Jiu-Jitsu. That guy is pretty dope, man. Like it's just that there's. No one really knows about them much, man, you know, because mm. they, um, yeah, they, they're just, uh, like, teaching guys in the hood and guys who just generally want to know how to defend themselves and stuff, but not all of them are becoming champs and stuff. But shout out to these mm. guys. But, hey, Ryan, Ryan, yeah. imagine this, bro, right? Okay. Imagine you're a fighter yeah. coming out of South Africa, right? Yeah. And you're working with Neil Geyser. Yeah. Right. And well, you're and 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 you're working with um, Henry Madini. Oh. 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 That could be good. That could be bro. good. And bro. this is what needs to happen, bro. Like, if we could take all our skills and put them together onto our fighters, bro. Like yeah. Henry is like a decorated uh, Muay Thai champion from South Africa, bro. Bro, we've he actually got it. a few. We've actually got no. a few guys that are that are pretty talented. One, uh, one of the guys uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, of training with a few times and sparring, uh, Pete Matong, uh, one of our, our old school guys, Muay Thai and kickboxing world champion back in the day. Mm. You know, we we're, we've got a lot of guys, man. Like we, mm. it's just unfortunate that uh, a lot of our guys that were already amazing weren't around at the time when combat sports was getting the shine that it is now. Mm. Uh, but I, I'm very hopeful for the future. I think we're going to start producing some serious guys all around. Like uh, like we for sure got the talent. It's just about getting the guys trained and getting them exposed so they can get these opportunities. 100%. 100%. Agreed. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. That is very insightful. I'm going to just call this episode Drickers Duplessis for our boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. Bring him. He sees this. Yeah. Bring back the gold. Hey, you got any words for our champ, bro? For our future champ? You got any words? Yeah, Last words? son. Get it done. Get it done. We know you got this. You can do this, son. Let's get Fingers it. Crossed, huh? Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. For the guys that interact with us and post the comments, we really appreciate that. We will get through to your comments, uh, all three of them. Uh, We love them, man. We love them. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, don't forget to do the YouTube thing. Like, subscribe, show some love. That's it from us. Gentlemen, signing out. Let's go.